hi, hello. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Hey, so it's May 1st. I'm fulfilled about it's May 1st. I'm filming this video. It's Sunday. I will spare you my spiraling thoughts about how it's May 1st of the year of our Lord 2021 and where that's sending me mentally. And instead, I'm obviously here to talk about what I read in April. But first, I have to say a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a virtual private network or a VPN. And when most people think of a VPN, they think of a program that masks your IP address so that you can watch TV or movies that are outside of your country. And they would be correct, but a VPN offers you so much more. Surfshark itself is very affordable and they have high speed connections in multiple countries across the world. So Surfshark's apps themselves are well-designed, easy to use. If you get one account, you can have unlimited devices that means no matter how many people are in your house if you have one account you can use it on any phones tablets ipads tvs that you want and like i said they have fast servers in over 65 countries for private streaming any way you are they have top-notch encryption for online protection if you're out you're on public wi-fi you're very vulnerable so it's really good to have a vpn on um, so that your information can be protected also they have ad blockers built into the vpn and if you're traveling and you're in certain countries where maybe there's certain social media or websites blocked you can get around that when you're using surf shark so so many reasons to get it i don't know why you don't have it already but if you do want to sign up because you're a lovely subscriber of mine if you click the link down below you get three months free and 83 percent off of your subscription to surf shark which is kind of ridiculously amazing don't ask questions just do it so click that link down below thank you so much to surf shark for sponsoring today's video okay so again we are in the fifth month already I don't know how it happened. April? Huh, who knew? Like she just she just flew by. So I started off the month not really reading, coming out of my reading slump, which I feel like I'm I'm coming out of. I'm still really primarily in a romance mood, also reading nonfiction, but I did read more than I initially thought I would based on how I felt in the first week of April. I don't know how many things I read. I'm just gonna go on my Goodreads and go through them. Um, even though I need to remember to put one in here that isn't on my Goodreads because it was part of a kind of a secret TBR, but that video will probably be out tomorrow or on the next whatever day. It'll be out eventually. The first book I finished in April and probably is contributed to my reading slump was a book I started in. I started The Bone Orchard in March, March 13th, and I finished it in April by Sarah Mueller. I believe this is a debut, and I really got sucked in by the cover, Shame on Me, and then Elle from Elliot Brooks was like, I wanna read that too, do you wanna buddy read it? And so I started it way earlier, and she started it, put it down, but then she finished. So then I was like, fine, I'm gonna finish. But it just did not work for me. I can't even really explain to you what this book is about. I was encouraged because Bethany did a reading vlog when she read it and at first she was like kind of uh, and then she grew to really enjoy it. I think she gave it four stars and so I was like I know that maybe it okay it's already time to change my battery god damn. Okay here she is miss my battery is always dying. Back to the bone orchard. I felt so lost this entire book and even when we finally started getting more information I never really felt like I knew all of the characters like if they were talking or even with their name I was like but who is that and by the end I was like what so the bone orchard I don't <laughs> is it fan it's fantasy it's fantasy there's like this house that's kind of like a madam's house or whatever you know the ladies are satisfying the men's and uh, there's a main lady, but she also has another lady in here. And then she's made bone people from herself, maybe. And they all have like names like Patience, Honor, I don't even know, Charm, 
pride pain okay their names are shame justice desire pride pain and the lead one is charm she is a madam it says this this on goodreads says she is a whore and a madam i i wouldn't use that language but okay and i guess it's kind of like necromancy and she's also kind of in prison so like she's in charge of this house but she kind of is she has like this i don't think they call it a mental lock or something like some of the king is basically controlling her and this the beginning of the story the whole thing that sets it up is the king is poisoned i think and he's slowly dying she's summoned to the palace or is it before he dies whatever the king dies so he either tells her before or as he's dying that he thinks somebody killed one of his sons killed him he has like four sons and she needs to figure out who it is and kill him i think and that's the story like her trying to figure out which son killed him because she was like the king's prized lady to have fun times with i think y'all i truly I feel like I can keep up with most things and I feel like this was more confusing than Gideon in the Ninth and I felt lost in Gideon in the Ninth but then things did start kind of coming together this I was like I, this might as well be written in German because I don't know what's going on and I would be talking to Elle and I'm like yeah I still can't differentiate who charm pain pride is is she alive is she not or is she a she is they a they I don't know I don't know Miss Sarah did not make it clear to me and maybe maybe it was just me Elle didn't love it either um but when I finished it it kind of was like a rage finish I was like I'm ready to be done with this book and I gave it a one star is it a maybe it's a two because I'm thinking of other books that I've given two stars I'm like well those books are like absolutely terrible so maybe it's a two but I just I don't get it I truly don't know what else to say I didn't get it I felt confused the whole time I was lost I was reading and of course going into it I was like okay I'm gonna give it a little time and then I was like ah, and I had put it down at around like the 40% mark I think and then picked it up a couple weeks later so that could have also aided in that but I just never felt I never felt I got into a good rhythm. I never felt a good pacing for myself reading it. I just always was like, okay, Charm, I think was the only one I could, I knew who she was because she was the lady in charge, but everybody else I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. It said pride went down at the bakery and shame, I, I was like, was a shame, I don't know. So I, I can't give you good information on that. I'm very thirsty. How do you get you? Um, so yeah, I really have no confused, befuddled, bewildered, lost, me, I. So, um, Godspeed, I guess? I don't know. Then what really started me back and getting me back into a reading mood was the bride test came in. I'm from the library and I read the kiss quotient years ago and I've just been like meaning to get to the next one so I was like fine it has been coming in from the library for a while and I keep delaying it I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna read it I think I need a romance right now and it was exactly what I needed I ate it up I think I read a little bit of it the last night we were in the hotel when I was with my friend in Geneva and then I finished it um the next day waiting at the airport and on the plane I ate it up is my favorite way to talk about books now so this one obviously is the second one um and the main character is well the hero is like cousin to the hero from the first one if i'm correct and his name is kai and her name is esme or at least her american name because she is from vietnam and essentially she lives in vietnam she's a daughter she lives with her mother and grandmother and you know they don't have a lot of money but she i think is cleaning a hotel or something and kai's mom is in vietnam and sees her and is like you'll be perfect for my son because kai i believe is autistic but he lives on his own he's very smart he has a really great job but you know he just likes to be on his own doing whatever and has no interest in women right now and his mom is like you need to get married and so she is like you come back with me like you try this summer get him to fall in love with you y'all get married and if it doesn't work out i'll fly you back to vietnam and so she's like well you know this could be a great opportunity for my me and my family especially my daughter and so she goes to I think they're in California and of course Kai is like excuse me 
<laughs> and she's like, yeah, she's moving in. So, you know, like, prepare the spare bedroom. She's moving in. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, get to know her. Stock your house with things she likes. And I, at first, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this premise. It's a little, it's a little much. But you see, Kai also has something that he's dealing with. He lost, I don't know, I can't remember if his cousin or a very close friend, like his best friend he lost maybe 10 years ago. And uh, so he has that that he's dealing with. And then, you know, being autistic, he just has certain things that he doesn't like or certain ways he doesn't like to be touched and things like that. And of course, that's going to be a barrier for Esme to get close to him. Um, but obviously, it's a romance. So those walls slowly break down. And it was so sweet watching it. And then just like... <sighs> just sort of certain small moments and him having his realization and his brother talking to him and like helping him figure out his feelings because I think he also doesn't uh, not to spoil it but he you know he has trauma and then certain he doesn't like always process his feelings and realize how he really feels about somebody and <laughs> I was just like yes uh, you love her don't you so yeah I really enjoyed that one and I need to read the heart principle however I have heard that it is still technically a romance that it has is heavier on like maybe the life stuff and like different trauma things are dealing with but I'm still gonna read it because I really like Helen Huang's writing and I love the kiss quotient love the bride test also if you haven't read the bride test or if you have and you own it you should and you didn't you should read the author's note because that also made me cry because she was talking about um how this story was like inspired by her mom and I was just like yes, yes. <laughs> oh my god so loved that one and I think that definitely helped me get back in my groove and then the next one that came in that I had heard some people talking about was The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams and this is an interracial romance our main character well our heroine is Britta I believe Britta and Wes. Okay, so Britta and she's black. She's a plus size woman, but she's very confident in her body. She doesn't want to lose weight. Um, but she is like, Oh, you know, if I could, you know, get stronger or like improve something. Sure. So because she's gonna try this app. But she's not like I need to shrink my body. I'm not worthy. Like she's very confident. And she works at like this. I can't remember if it's like a social some kind of website that does like lifestyle and stuff and she comes up with this project because she's trying to get up to like being a main writer that she's going to try out this fitness app um and you know detail her journey through it and as someone who is fat but does not want to lose weight and so Wes our hero is the CEO of this fitness app he also is like a certified personal trainer but he's been feeling down he has issues with his family like his mom and his sister and he's like uh you know I'm better when I'm like actually training clients and not just doing the CEO business side of it I get bored so he decides he's gonna take on a client and so they are matched and he doesn't know that she is writing this piece or doing this project and she doesn't know that he's actually the CEO and so it starts out with a lot of like little message, a lot of text messages. No, or maybe it's, I think it starts out with emails and then like messages within the app or maybe the text messages, whatever, a lot of messaging between each other. And oh, uh, obviously like builds is like, starts as like client and, and train trainer and trainee and then they get friendly and then it gets a little more than that. Look, that entire book, I was just like, mm. actually, let me show you. Let me, hold on. Pretend this is my Kindle. I was just like. <laughs> Literally, I don't know why I opened that like you can open a Kindle, but. Why does this camera always be moving trying to reveal my mess? Stay here. I'm here. I loved it. I thought that there their dynamic was so good like they were it just felt really natural their progression and their banter back and forth the jokes they made with each other when they were still like friendly and then kind of things that got a little flirty and then you get both of their POVs which I love in a romance because I love to see what both characters are thinking and how their feelings are evolving if they are you know lying to themselves or trying to suppress their feelings and um Wes does have some issues with his mom and I think drug abuse and maybe alcoholism. So content warning with that. Um, and then Berta's only thing really is her trying to advance at work. So 
and obviously for them to meet it moves from just digital to they do meet in person but there are just some moments in there where I was like oh my god and Wes is so sweet he's just like oh he's so sweet he's like such a good man and I was just like oh god I thought their chemistry was really great I thought it was funny I read it fast it made me really happy so I highly recommend it and uh yeah I just loved it so merch <laughs> I think she has another one like how to fail at flirting or something and I want to read that one but Wes and Britta beautiful then still on my I read predominantly romance you're gonna be able to tell but then I read equivalent exchange by Christina C Jones because I just want to read more of her work she has a lot of books and it was on Kindle Unlimited however I should have looked it up because this is not a rom-com this is a contemporary romance and I would give a content warning for loss of a loved one um loved ones and you know um mentions of illness including Alzheimer's so I that's what really was like excuse me I came here for love and happiness and y'all are taking me down but these two characters are Karis and Lakin so Karis is just out of a relationship I thought she was married but she was not she was in a long-term relationship with a douchebag who she also used to work at the same company like graphic design so she's left that company and she's going through some things because he's abusive or he was abusive he is you know fucking with her because they had shared accounts she's trying to get her money back all these things she's going through it and she goes into a bar. The bar is owned by Lakin, who is, he was married, um, but he has been divorced for a while. He's in his like early 40s. I feel like they're late 30s, early 40s. And he owns this bar, he runs it with his sister, and he is trying to get into microbrewing, um, like his own beer. And his family, I think this book, is it? I don't know. I don't know if it says what state this takes place in but his family is from New Orleans no his family is from Louisiana I don't know if they're from New Orleans but they um make whiskey bourbon it's a family legacy to be in the, the spirits the alcohol and spirits whatever and he's into brewing beer so his mom and his dad um and then his sister and he lost his brother so content warning but then there's other stuff that happens and anyway she comes to this bar he's the bartender she doesn't know he's the, the owner and you know she's like a bruise on her face and he's flirting with her and they end up like what she thinks have what she thinks is going to be a one night stand and then she ends up interviewing for this job for to be a graphic designer for this company and she doesn't realize or she realizes afterwards that it's his bar if that made sense I don't know if it made sense anyway it's a romance so they get together and it's Christina C. Jones so it's gonna be great my only thing was that I was like I'm here with y'all dealing with your issues like him and the stuff that was going on with his um ex-wife so also I would say content warning for like miscarriage like talk of that and then her with her abusive ex who was also trying to sabotage her new job but then you bring in their family members and what was going on with that I'm like damn and so I was just crying and sad but I really did enjoy it in their relationship and their the things they had to work through um and then also the family aspect his like mom and dad and just him working with his sister in the bar I don't know if I I love like a bakery romance and stuff like that and um yeah I don't know I just it was envisioning for some reason I was envisioning no no maybe I wasn't but Lakin I just had see this camera moved again this is getting ridiculous there's a ghost in here who's trying to sabotage me and show you how much y'all I'm so confused this camera is on a tripod the tripod is on even flooring and I know because it has a little it has a little thing that has a little circle and when it's in the middle of the circle you know it's even the tripod is even I'm not touching there's nothing touching it what's happening why is it moving I'm very confused anyway I really enjoyed that one but watch out or be just be cautious of those um, content warnings because she really took me out of my love zone and put me in the crying zone and then would put me back in the love zone and I wanted to fight 
<laughs> then y'all know I read The Awakening, which is Zodiac Academy book one. I have a video about this book and why it's a wretched mess. And so many people under that video were like, it gets better. Watch your start. Book three gets better. I shouldn't have to wait till book three. So now it was a mess. Uh, so I will link that video if you want to get all of my feelings. I did do non spoilery and spoilery thoughts on that book, but mm, not for me. Okay, then I also read Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm shocked that I read it this early because usually my library has a, a long wait for anything new, but for this one, they did not. This is the follow up to Black Sun, which I read last fall and really loved. Um, and I will always take the chance to say I loved the cover of Black Sun and the cover of Fevered Star is hideous and it should have been a sign. Not like I hated the book, but it's Narampa on the cover. So that should have been an indication of how I was going to feel about this book. I read the Fevered Star or not. Is it the no, I read Fevered Star really quickly. And I was feeling really weird about it. It's in a vlog. Um, because I was like, I'm reading it fast. I don't know if it's a lot happening or if I'm loving it. It very much is a, a middle book. I don't know how many books is going to be in this series, but it's feeling to me like a setup for a trilogy, but I don't know. Um, so we, I reread the Black Sun. I got the audio and I was, I realized I remembered a lot of it. So I really just skipped to the second half because I didn't remember really what happened. Um, in Tova and like at the end and I listening to it I was like I didn't remember that. I knew the ending was like whoa but I didn't remember it being so abrupt so Fevered Star picks up literally right where we left off um with Black Sun and I almost wish that she had maybe wrapped it up a little more in Black Sun like this first part of Fevered Star was in Black Sun but that was in Fevered Star. So we're figuring out where everybody is, what's going on, their status, um, whatnot. And then the entire book is kind of like just moving people into their places for the third book. Like alliances are being built and lines are being drawn on who's on what side. And so it's like, well, this person's going over here and they have these people. And then this person's going over here and they're going to have these people and this person's going over here. And by the end, like at the end, you know, everybody's basically where they're going to be or like on their way to their final destination, where they're going to be for the start of the third one. So I don't know, I guess I would give it like a three and a half because I, I still enjoyed it overall, especially being back with my favorite Serapio and Shiala, but I felt like we didn't get a lot of them. We also had a new POV that I was like, I don't care about you. And then of course we had Narampa and um, Akoa, I think is his name. But yeah, Narampa did not improve for me. I can't really spell it out to you what I don't like about her. I just don't. And Serapio and Shiala, I just did not get enough of them. Um, so yeah, I just kind of have mixed feelings on it. Like it wasn't a bad book, but it also, I felt like we ended on at such a like, whew, Black Sun and then Fever Star was like, I don't know. If you've read it yet, please let me know your thoughts. But I know a few people who also have read it and a few loved it and a few feel the same as me. So I would love to know what you think. Okay, and then I, my last two I read, um, The Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, which is for my vlog for last or this week but you'll be seeing it and it'll be last week whatever but I had asked my patrons like popular romances or romances that they liked and I picked some that were readily available from the library to read um and I read one I DNF'd another one and as of now I started one last night I don't know if I'm gonna finish it today but I read The Boyfriend Material first by Alexis Hall and I had seen this cover around but never really like felt an inkling to pick it up but I'm so glad that they recommended it to me because I loved it it was another one where I'm laughing and crying crying laughing and crying and smiling and so happy this one is set in London and it's male male romance between Luke and Oliver so Luke is kind of a hot mess um he 
is like the son of kind of a fallen from grace rock star and so he ends up in the tabloids a lot and he had was in like a serious relationship and then that person went to the tabloids and he's just kind of been a mess and he works for like a fundraising like a nonprofit. And some people are pulling out their donations because they see him in the news and the media and they're like, we don't want to be associated with this. You're debauchery and especially because he's gay. So they're like, you're the wrong kind of gay. And so his boss is like, you are going to be fired unless you can find a way to fix this. Um, and so you need to be seen with somebody respectable and like kind of rebuild your image so we can get these people's money. And then the other guy is Oliver and Oliver is basically the opposite of Luke. He went to like great schools, he has upstanding parents, he went to Oxford, he's a barrister, he's like put together, very neat and orderly and everything is in his place and Luke's kind of a disaster, including his flat. And so they have a mutual friend and so they are set up as the Oliver is supposed to be this respectable person that Luke's gonna go out with to make his image better. Of course they fall in love and I loved every moment of it. I would say my only critique is that sometimes you know you know in a romance when they finally like some it varies where the third act breakup is like sometimes it's maybe like 70 percent and sometimes it's like 95 percent and i'm like no i want it to be earlier so they can have more time actually together and this one was a bit late but i still loved it because they both had their own personal issues that they were working through, through like not feeling worthy of love and like issues with their family and just all the, i was like wow relatable same same and then they just were such a good pairing like obviously chaos to order and like life falling apart life together kind of and I just thought Oliver was so sweet and so intentional and so like <sighs> I, I I loved it I had such a good time reading I thought I feel like you may not like it if you don't like Luke's sense of humor it's very it can be crass sometimes I guess but I I loved it and I loved um their friends their friend groups are really funny there's like a moment <laughs> there's like a moment where they're like talking and then Luke's friends are like in the car and adding their commentary I don't know it was I I ate it up and I loved it um so I was crying and I was like feelings and this one is um more like closed door like they do have some like moments of like making out and touching and stuff but there's not really anything on page sex wise but I still really loved that. That's a, what, what I didn't mention for a lot of these books is you know the sexy times but like oh wow too bad so sad. The equivalent if I went back really quick equivalent exchange fastest way to fall bride test all do have like sex on page um but this one was more closed door. And then finally, I read The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This wasn't a patron, patron suggestion, but it did just come in from the library. And another one that I loved so much. And this setup, we have Lena and Max. I love Max. And Lena is a wedding planner. Max works like for marketing. But the book starts out, Lena is, it's her wedding day and she's getting married to Andrew, who is Max's older brother. But Andrew texts Max and says, you know what, you were right, what we talked about last night, I'm not ready, or like me and Lena aren't meant to be, I'm not gonna, I'm not coming. Basically, I'm abandoning her at the altar and I'm not gonna tell her, I'm gonna text my brother to tell her. And so he delivers that news and of course he is hated because he is the messenger and the text message said that he talked to his brother, basically talked him out of getting married. So Lena, of course, hates both of them. Flash forward three years, Lena's still doing her wedding planning business. She is single and Max and Andrew are working at their mother's marketing firm and they both have a common interest in a hotel group. So Lena's trying to get a job there to head their like wedding division and they are trying to get their, all their marketing business and they have to work together. So Lena is paired with Max and Andrew works with another candidate and they have to like work together for a few weeks to come up with a proposal to pitch and then whoever is the best one that either Lena or the other person would become like the wedding director. And so it is of course you know she has feelings against him. She's Brazilian American so she has a really fun feisty confrontational family and they take part in this and sometimes Max you know he's got a he's got to be in the hot seat with the family and uh they're very protective of lena and she's also very like closed off with her feelings but of course max breaks down those walls 
And then uh, Max has like this ongoing life competition basically with Andrew being his older brother and I don't know, it was so good. Like the situations because they were working together so they would have to do things together, you know, he's watching her when she's doing her wedding planning and they have to like go see, go places and see venues. Oh no, do we get stuck here overnight? Ah, oh, the, it was hot, it was hot. It was hot, it was steamy, and I love Max. He was so in touch with his feelings, and it was dual POV. So, again, we got to see both of them, their thoughts, um, you know, when they would notice the other person or notice how the other person was making them feel. And I was just like, oh my god, I love love. It was so good. It's so good. And I'm very shocked at the rating because it only has like a three point something. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know what's, what's wrong here. This book was wonderful. I think I gave it five. Yeah, I did because I ate it up, of course. Um, so that was the end. That was the last book I read in April. A great way to end my month. And um, so it was a good time. It started off rough with Bone Orchard, but it definitely picked up once I started getting back in my romance bag. I did have a couple of duds, but overall a really good reading month. And I just got in or got a notification that Dating Dr. Dill, I think, came in. I'm from the library so I'm like I need to start my nonfiction but I also want to read another romance mm. um, and then I may try to finish the one uh, that I started that my patron recommended but I don't know if I want to read it because it's not a rom-com it's more of a like a serious contemporary romance and I don't know if I'm in the mood for that well that was my reading month so tell me how it went for you now that the month is over um, if you have any romances that you've read recently that you think I'll like, let me know. But that's all from me because I have a headache and I was like, oh, I'm going to film another video. Nope. Nope. Ah, this is going to be it for me today. So thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Thank you all for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. All the books I mentioned will be linked down below. Also in the description are my social medias, ways to get in contact with me, ways to support my channel. Uh, and I think that is all I have for you. So I hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you in my next one.